you there? Hey. Hey, girl. Are you trying to watch this video? Oh, did you, you can't watch this video? Okay, if you can't watch the video, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Princess Melissa, a.k.a. It's the Princess Duh. And today, I'm back with another video. So, today's video is going to be all about Greek life. Yes, today's video is going to be all about Greek life. If you are a second semester freshman and, or a sophomore, junior, or senior, and you are thinking about joining a sorority, or if you're a guy and maybe you're joining a fraternity and you kind of wound up on my channel, welcome 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 we are gonna go ahead and talk about greek life and how to get into greek life specifically the d9 um i don't really know what the panhellenic um council does but i'm a part of nine panhellenic council and that's the d9 so that is all um the black sororities and fraternities so i'm a part of the first and the finest sorority alpha kappa alpha sorority incorporated so my sorority was founded in 1908 on the campus of Howard University and if you guys need a little bit more information about aka everything is going to be found on the website so if you guys um have not been able to check the website out go check the website out I will put the link to the website in the comments down below without further ado we're going to go ahead and get right into this video I'm not going to keep you guys any longer and this is just a quick disclaimer for you guys um, just before we get started, I have no authority whatsoever on whether or not you get picked. I'm just a normal general member and I'm just giving you guys some advice. For those of you who don't have any sorority people or um, fraternity members in your family or are just too nervous or you don't know what to say and you just kind of need help. I'm just here to help you and guide you. But again, I cannot 100% guarantee that you will get into the sorority. It will be all upon the chapter, the way that the chapter is set up, um, and the, how you show up. So, without further ado, I'm going to start with tip number one. So, tip number one, I'm sure if you guys have watched other videos, you've probably uh, seen and heard this before. But tip number one, it is very crucial. It is, do your research. So, you want to do your research. I know that you guys have probably heard that a lot, but you want to do your e research because you want to know what, what each sorority is known for. You want to know what philanthropic adventures a sorority may, may be in. You want to know, um, you know, what what is a sorority strong suit what do they current what are they currently working on right now that may interest you what are things that they've done in the past that may interest you for example alpha kappa alpha is very very strong on um breast cancer awareness we do um we do have a breast cancer awareness. We have like a van and the truck goes around and, and it does mammograms for women all across the country. It's something that Alpha Kappa Alpha does and, it, and it's really important to us. So women's health is something that's important to Alpha Kappa Alpha. So maybe if you are interested in women's health and, and you really want to make a change in that specific area, then maybe you should go to AK. But there might be something that Delta Sigma Theta is doing. There might be something that the Zetas or the Sigma Gamma Rows are doing that might really interest you or pique, you, or pique your interest. So it's important to just know what the sorority is known for outside of just obviously its colors or, you know, um, outside of its colors. Um, know, know a little bit about the founders, you know, like knowing the foundation to something is very important. So knowing a little bit about the founders and maybe what, what, why they started the sorority in the first place, you know, some sororities may have be, may have been started, um, based on different morals and values, um, than the other. So just make sure that you're doing your research. So in addition to doing your research, make sure that a part of that is looking up what sororities and fraternities are at your campus um because i know for me um i did my intake in undergrad and 
there at the time there were only AKAs, there were Zetas, and then the Sigma Gamma Rose were coming back that next semester. So there were only three options at my school. So I, I always wanted to be an AKA, but if somebody at my school wanted to be a Delta, they would have had to transfer. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your research. Also research to see if the specific sorority is at your college, because if it's not, you don't want to just settle and go to a sorority that you really don't want to be a part of, because this is for life. Like this is for life. So if you don't want to be an AKA for life, <laughs> then don't join aka transfer schools or start with the school that um has it already or do like a city-wide chapter if the school is in like like chicago chicago um if you go to a college there's like six or seven colleges in chicago like big universities if you go to one of those universities a lot of them are just might have an individual chapter but some of them have city-wide chapters so you might be able to join a city-wide chapter so just make sure that you're doing your research and that you're knowing about what it is you're joining you're not just gonna take a job and you don't know the responsibilities or the pay of a job. So why would you join a sorority and you don't know any of the responsibilities or what comes with being a part of the sorority? Right? Okay. Alright, so our second tip is to look the part. I don't know if you guys have heard this before, but looking the part is very essential no matter what you do in life. You need to make sure you look the part. And I don't mean showing up to an event wearing pink and green. That's not what I mean at all. What I mean is make sure that you have professional attire. Make sure that you have a nice blouse. Make sure that you have a nice pair of slacks. Make sure that you have a nice, a nice dress, you know. Make sure that a long dress, right? Like a, a nice evening gown. Um, make sure that you have proper fitting heels or flats that your big toe is not popping out that your shoe is not talking make sure that if you're gonna wear a wig that your wig is laid if you're gonna be natural just make sure that it's it's properly groomed and it's not matted the reason i'm saying this is because looking the part is very essential no matter what you do um you want to make sure that you're always looking your best you want to present your best self whenever you go to events of course you know you might you might have everything internally and I'm not saying that we go based off looks at all. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is we want to know that you can go out into the world and you know what to wear to certain events. The last thing we will want is for you to show up to a cocktail evening event wearing a jogging suit because you don't have the proper clothing. You want to just make sure that you look the part because, for example, once we had a tea party event. And so, just making sure that you're a freshman or a sophomore with a nice dress in your closet. So, when the tea party event comes, you can look your best. Because when you look your best, you feel your best. And when you feel your best, you do your best. So, just make sure that you have proper proper fitting clothes that your clothes fit you properly. It doesn't need to be designer. It doesn't need to be name brand. But just make sure that... that you're showing, you know, some form of decorum. You know, you want to look your best at all times. So, again, um, this this is not anything crazy. Like, like, don't take this one too, 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 too serious and go out and buy a Gucci bag that you can't afford. Because that's, again, that's not what I mean. What I mean is just make sure that you have the proper attire for the proper events. So that when it's time for the, the events, you look your best. So there are a few places that I would recommend if you just want to have some nice choice pieces in your closet. Zara and H&M are very affordable and you can also stop at the thrift store. When I was in college and I was trying to become an AKA, they actually had an event at the thrift store where they helped girls buy professional clothes. And you know, just having professional clothes is important because you're, you're in college to get a degree. You're going to be going on job interviews, you're going to be going on, you know, a, um, you might have to go do a career expo you don't know so you just want to always look your best on to number three so my third tip for you guys is to watch your social media presence and I don't mean the amount of followers you have I don't mean the amount of subscribers you have on your YouTube I don't mean how many people are liking your pictures watch your social media presence means watch what you post on social media aka is not picking you if you're smoking weed on social media it's just not a good look i'm gonna be honest it's not a good look um if you popping bottles hey we popping bottles hey like 
not a good look at all like i'm not saying have don't have your fun because let's be real all the aks are we've been in college before we all 21 like you're 21 you know if you're of age then you probably had a drink a few but what i'm saying is don't have a full bottle with casamigos chugging it hey, at the alpha house that's crazy and it looks crazy and it shows again that you don't have any decorum it's okay to have a glass it's okay to have a glass or a drink and you know you're drinking it but on the days that you don't drink on the days that you drink just don't post the video you don't have to post on instagram that you're drinking to be drunk like if you want to be if you want to have a drink just have a drink and you don't have to post it if, if if smoking is what you do then don't post it don't shake your don't be shaking your butt on like twerking hey twerk 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 like girl a nice little jazz dance is cute to post and then once you put the camera down hey do you because if if it's not seen then it didn't happen but the last thing you want is for you to be is for it to be a pole at one at the football house and you swinging around the pole looking like a stripper do you honestly think that that you're gonna get picked and it's like like be for real you wouldn't even get picked for a job at walmart so like just have a sense of decorum understand what you're posting obviously don't post anything sexual don't post your your private areas don't send pictures of your private areas to men because they you know they can be grimy and do and like you know put your business out there like have a sense of decorum watch what you post watch what you send to people because the rule of thumb is anything that you don't want your mom to see don't post anything that you don't want your dad to see don't post anything you don't want your grandma to see don't post and that's the rule of thumb so you know if if this little jazz dance is cool with your grandma then okay but if you twerk 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 sticking up your middle finger chugging but lights if you know your grandma is not gonna want to see that you shouldn't post it that's the rule of thumb okay so just watch what you post on social media watch what you send to people and just be safe out here this next tip is pretty self-explanatory i'm not gonna even talk about it too much the next tip is have a high gpa the reason i'm saying high gpa is because it differs at every school some schools are on that plus or minus scale um so so they might look different for my school a 2.3 was a c average so if you're somewhere where they have a plus or minus scale like my school then aim for a 3.2 or higher on a 4.0 scale if your school goes up to 4.5, then aim for a 3.8. You want to be up there. You want to have a high GPA. One, because having a low GPA is just not respected. You're not going to be able to get internships in college. You're not going to be able to, to be a part of certain organizations. Like, you know, you're, you're going to lose scholarships. So just ha having a high GPA is really great overall. But specifically for Alpha Kappa Alpha, there is a GPA requirement. And... I believe right now it is you have to have a what is equivalent to a C average or higher at your school. So if you don't know what the C average is at your school, just talk, just send an email to your guidance counselor. They might just give it to you, you know, but um, you just want to make sure that you have that GPA because there's a there is a threshold. If AKA says you have to have a C or higher, they don't care if you have one point below it. They don't care if you have a two points below it. They don't care if you're going to get it up next semester. They don't care. So it's best to just always have a good GPA. So when, when it is time to rush, that you are ready to do so. When you're part of an organization, we take very seriously our grade point average. We like to have a high GPA because we, we, we literally hold high scholastic and ethical standards. So... We like to always have a high GPA. So if your GPA is not high, bump it up by taking some summer classes next summer. Take on an extra a extra class this semester. That's easy. Don't take a biology class, girl. Take a, a theater arts or a music literature, something, an English class, something that's super easy that's going to bump your GPA up so you can be ready for the spring. And if your GPA is just not there this semester, keep trying. And, and keep pushing but you just want to have a high GPA 
in addition to that at a rush there could be 50 girls coming in but maybe maybe only 30 are going to be accepted they're going with the girls with the highest gpa they're going with the girls that they have the full package and the highest gpa so if you have a 2.8 and every other girl there has a 4.0 you may not get picked because you're not holding high scholastic and ethical standards so again just be mindful of your gpa next i'm going to very quickly talk about volunteer service to be a part of our sorority, um, and again, all of this is on a checklist. A lot of this stuff I'm saying is on a checklist on the AKA website. So go check out the checklist if you want a full, if you want like full details of what exactly you need in your application packet. So one of the next things I want to talk about is volunteer work. So you just want to make sure that you have some volunteer hours on you. Nobody is saying that you need to be Mother Mary O Saint. We are not saying that. But maybe just having... 20 hours a semester is really good because as a college student you only have like class four hours out of a day maybe and there's 24 hours a day you probably have three or four hours worth of class and so what are you doing with the rest of your time and that's and so 20 hours per semester is not that many that is not the requirement for aka you have to go to the website because the requirement can change from time to time but what I'm saying is you just want to have a nice bulk of volunteer work. Our sorority is obviously about giving back our sisterhood. We love to give back to the community. We love to give back to each other. So just make sure that you're volunteering somewhere, whether it be in your, you know, if you're a science student, volunteer your teacher and your teacher's um, class to help them clean up beakers and test tubes after hours. Volunteer at your church volunteer at a food pantry volunteer at the nearest uh, if your school if you have a school that's in a small college town and they have daycares and they have um you know the grade schools they they love when the college kids come and talk they love when the college kids come and read books so just join and in addition to that a lot of schools just have volunteer clubs so reach out to your guidance counselor um, see if there's a club that just specifically does volunteer work and just get active because that's what we like to see you do because that's what we do. That's a part of being in a sorority. A lot of people don't talk about this in their videos, but I'm going to talk about it for a quick second. Get your funds in order right now, right now. Don't wait until you see the rush flyer. And then you go to the rush and they tell you that it's going to be $2,500 to join. And all you got is $200. Because guess what? You're not going to be able to join. You're not going to be able to join. Make sure that you're getting your funds together. So that can look like a bunch of different things. Get a on Get an on-campus job. You can also, you know, if you have parents that are willing to give you the money, obviously, Tell your parents ahead of time, hey mom, hey dad, I'm gonna, I'm thinking about joining a sorority and usually it costs around this much. Would that be okay? So that your parents can get their funds together. Another thing you can do that I've, I've actually seen many, many women do is they will go to different people in their family and ask each of those people. So if you have um, 10 people in your family, you can go to each person in your family and ask them for $300 because you're trying to join a sorority and they will and they can give it to you. Obviously, that's not the case with everybody. I'm just brainstorming with you. But those are just some really creative ways because the reality is everybody, nobody's rich. Like none of us are like rich like Beyonce. Obviously, all of us are working nine to fives. Everybody's just trying to make it. So to drop $2,500 in the course of th in a three week time span may not be realistic for a lot of women so i'm telling you now to get your funds together in advance so that when they tell you that there's going to be a rush in october in november or if the rush is next semester in in march or april you're not scrambling to come up with two thousand dollars or scrambling to come up with 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 whatever the money that they're asking you for also not only get your funds ready for for joining the sorority but also get your funds ready to travel 
aka we do a lot of traveling and i and we travel with the sorority we we have um a lot of conferences a lot of seminars that are very helpful for you and like with leadership very helpful for personal self-development self-growth a lot of great opportunities and you want to be able to travel to these opportunities so just making sure that you have your funds together so you can book your train ticket book your plane ticket rent the car get the hotel whatever it is that you need to do you're available to do it the last thing you want is to join a sorority and then you don't even have the funds to get to go to the leadership conferences there might be several different conferences that you need to go to or that you want to go to and it might cost you a hundred dollars for your hotel and then fifty dollars to drive like you know fifty dollars of gas so you just want to make sure that you are having some money um also you're going to want to have money to buy perry that's also the fun part that nobody talks about. You want to have money to buy Perry. I'm not saying go crazy. I'm not saying you have to buy Perry. But like part of being Greek, one of the fun parts, at least for me, is wearing my letters and wearing them proud. Not just having one little t-shirt, but I have several jackets. I have several shirts. I have a plethora of of um, of um of jackets and, you know, a plethora of headbands, you know, whatever it is. So just get your funds ready so that you can really enjoy the sorority and so that you can actually be, um, you know, so that you can actually pay for intake whenever you decide to join. So we're almost through the end of this video, guys. And I thank you guys so much for staying here. If you are still here with me, I thank you so much for still being here. If you have any specific comments, put them down in the comment section below. I will try my best to answer them. And if you have any personal questions, you can email me. I don't mind if you email me. I've had several women email me about personal questions before. So if you want to do that, that is perfectly fine too. Also, put a pink heart down below if you're still here. Um, because that is really great. If you guys made it, even I know I'm giving a lot of info. So if you made it even halfway through this video, then definitely drop a heart. It don't matter what color. Drop a red heart, a green heart, a pink heart, a black heart. Just drop a heart down in the comment section if you're still with me. So my next advice to you is get your packet ready. Get your application packet ready now. Don't wait until you see a flyer and the flyer comes up on a Monday and, and the rush is that Saturday. Now you have five days to get community service papers signed to type out an application essay, grades, and they want the, they want the, the real copy. They don't want one that you printed out. They're gonna wanna see your grades from the registrar office. So you have to go and pay for that and get that together. And there are several other things on a checklist that you also have to have as well. So just get your packet together in advance. Make sure that if you're doing, if you already have community service hours done, that you in advance go and get that paper signed by your teacher or by the um, administrator or whoever it is so that it's already in your packet. Already be typed. If you know that you want to join AKA this, this school year, whether it be fall or spring, you should already be working on your essay. You cannot write a good essay overnight. I don't care what anybody says. It, it might take you a, a few weeks to write a really nice essay. Or, you know, it might take you uh, several days. And what if you don't have several days? So it's important to just be working on your packet. What I did was, I'm not gonna lie, I already had my packet together that fall. I had my packet together and then I had everything already printed out in a little folder. I hid it in my drawer so my roommate couldn't see it. Nobody knew it was in there. And then when AKA posted that they was having a rush, I pulled that bad boy right out. I just went through, made sure everything was properly dated, properly signed. I just went through my um, essay again, made sure it looked okay. And then I went ahead and I submitted it. And I got in because I was prepared. You need to be prepared. So that's something a lot of other people don't tell you guys. It's like try to have your paperwork done ahead of time and have it put somewhere privately, even if it's saved on a document in your computer, labeled just in secret code for yourself, like, you know, rush or something like that, or um, application paperwork. Just something for other people to not see. Then definitely do that because it's going to make it so much easier for you when it's actually rush time and all the other girls are scrambling around trying to get this sign and get that sign and run around campus like chicks with their hair cut off while you just sitting back relaxing like, okay, now you can properly prepare and get your mind right and get ready for the actual rush itself. 
tip that I have for you guys is to show up and show out. Show up and show out. When I say show up and show out, I mean it. When you go to the events, make sure that you are giving great participation. Don't be the girl sitting there in the corner like... Don't be that girl because now people think that you're not friendly. And guess what? AKA stop picking unfriendly hotties. They're not doing it. They want to pick nice women who are who are nice to the other women, who are professional, who are personable. Nobody's going to pick you and you in the corner like... No, show up, be bubbly, be happy, be excited to be there. If you're not even excited to be at the event, then what's the point of trying to join anyways? Be excited to be there, be happy to be there. You know, show up bubbly, show up with, with your nice outfit on, show up at the event. If they're doing a, if they're doing an all black event for Black History Month or something, show up with your really nice black, black dress and your and your little nice cute scarf on like show up and show out when they have a lot of times they have icebreakers so that they can get to know the girls in the room you know because they want to pretend they want to know who's potentially going to be their little sister they want to know names so that they can get to know you so that they can you know make sure that you're going to be a good asset to the sorority so when when they're doing icebreakers and they're playing popcorn games make sure you popping your popcorn girl like when you know whenever they whenever you're at an event and other girls are talking to you make sure you go up and talk to the other girls like make sure that you just show up and show out just basically do your best you know do your best at all times if you have volunteer service go to the volunteer service and volunteer your butt off Volunteer your butt off. Don't make yourself tired. Don't overtire yourself. But be nice to the people that you're volunteering with. Ask them if there's anything else that, that you can do before you leave. So that again, when those volunteer people need to sign your papers, they're signing it and they're like, go get it, girl. They're not like, mm, we don't even know if we should sign this because you beat up. Like, you know, they're really on your side and they're really helpful. So just make sure that throughout this whole process you show up and you show out don't come to the event with your hair not done that's crazy that's crazy you wouldn't even your mama would be so mad at you if you showed up anywhere with your hair not done like you know take the few seconds to pop in a little bun like i did put your little bangs out if you're natural like i did you know just you know really try just try. Just show up and try and be the best you that you can be. And I promise you, like, being your best self and putting your best foot forward will always make you a strong candidate at everything you do in life. Every job, every application, every room you enter, you are going to exude confidence by just being you and putting your best foot forward. So I hope that these tips were helpful to you guys. Um, I hope that you guys really enjoyed this. And I hope that you are my sister one day. I don't know if you're watching this, that I can get to call you Soror one day. And I pray and I pray and I pray that you get into the sorority or whatever sorority that you're looking to join or whatever job you're wanting to get. I am praying for you and I really hope that you get everything that you want because you deserve it. You deserve everything that you go after. You, you are deserving. Don't let nobody tell you you don't deserve it. Don't let nobody tell you you don't get to be in rooms because you can be in whatever room that you want to be in, okay? Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!